years, they had a class goal to earn 100 care points during that class. And CARES is, you know, courtesy and accountable and responsible, all the different uh, words that make up the acronym. And so, for example, they had to get a worksheet, they had to get into their journal book, and she said, if you can all have it at your desk and in five, then we're, we'll, we'll get a point. So five, four, three, two, one, kids got up, orderly, they grabbed worksheets, they brought them back to the table, you know, some would grab it and end up for the table, et cetera. We'll have 16 of the 100 points. And so you see this, not as this separate character thing over here, but integrated to the curriculum. At the middle school, um, um, uh, Mr. Waller, who's the new science teacher, free seating, you can sit wherever you want to. You can sit at the high table, you can sit in the back of the room, you can sit at the low table, you can sit on the floor, you can sit under, as long as you're focused and learning, you can sit where you want. When the focus and learning stops, that's one. And I think they have to three, and then it goes to a science seating. Kids don't want a science seating, the accountability is there. And then a uh, conversation with Chance, they're doing something called ROAR, Box ROAR is the acronym within the middle school, the mom is being responsible, et cetera. Um, all the ROAR books go to non-monetary rewards. So it costs us absolutely zero as a district. Um, one of the favorite ones right now is I get to trade my ROAR book points to get to go to the front of the line at lunch. So I can be first through the lunch line. Um, the other big one is you and a guest can go to a varsity game ticket. So football, volleyball, whatever you want to go to. And um, uh, mostly middle schoolers, they're bringing a parent. And so I get to go home and say, hey, mom or dad, I get to go to the game free tonight because of the Rohrbach. And what uh, Chance says is the most important part of it is now he has a reason to have conversations with kids. And it's talking about positive things. So I just thought that was really cool. Um, <clears throat> our teachers multitask all over the place. I watched a math class with uh, Katie Tate, and then I was watching a uh, wind time, and well, actually a reading class, and then a, a wind time. Um, and the number of different groups that are being managed simultaneously in a classroom, it's not 20 students sitting in desks doing the same thing. It's groups of four and five students working in four or five different stations. It just keeps rotating. Um, during wind time, uh, Ms. Heinbach had level two and three writing remediation going on and had the news crew on writing extension where the students were writing the middle school newspaper. So these uh, two and three kids were working on, I can identify the subject and the predicate in a sentence and I remember to capitalize and I remember to use punctuation. Over here, this team is figuring out who's writing which article, how do we want to lay it out, what's the most who, what, when, where, why of the middle school stories. And one teacher is working this whole range, just fascinating. Um, talking with second grade teachers, they thank the board specifically in getting more teaching resources into the elementary school. Um, their class sizes went from 24 to 26 last year. To 18 and 19 this year. And they said, profound difference. I asked, what's the biggest difference? They said, our kids actually have space to move and learn in a classroom. Six less bodies in a thousand square feet were making a difference. Um, we talked some about PLCs and common planning time. Flat out matters. They are getting together, they're taking data from these um, standards, <laughs> they can see the assessments. They see the students at which level they're at. They know their path to um, effective. Is that the level three effect? Proficient. Which, uh, proficient. proficient. And they can see every student where they're at, and they can segment and go back and forth, and they're talking about it together. I, it's just really cool stuff. School lunch is okay. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, my last is we have really just amazing administrators and staff that obviously, when you walk in the classroom, care deeply. And it's not just care, they're concerned about the learning, they're concerned about the child, they're concerned about the whole circle of who this little person is and what they're becoming. And it was just an amazing experience. So I'd invite all of you 
if you have a day off or you want to take a day off, uh, worthwhile activity. And maybe at some point, Howard, we build a couple of those into our calendar and have a couple of board learning days within the, uh, within the schools. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, anybody else? So I had a uh, get together and conversation with some friends from River Falls. Uh, one was one of their former uh, school board members, another, her husband uh, used to be a college professor that I knew back in college. And they continually told me that they keep an eye on our district very closely. Um, they see the positive things that are happening. Uh, they had one of their parents of uh, a troubled girl they had in uh, another district who moved into our district. And her parents are thrilled as to how she's being treated, how she's fitting in. And uh, she thoroughly enjoys being here, has made new friends, and uh, is getting along quite well, both socially, mentally, and academically. So um, it's another success story for our uh, teachers and administrators here. So the atmosphere of the district. So. There are people outside this district that are watching our performance, and uh, they're telling us to keep up the good work. So let's pass that along. So, thank you all. Anything else? OK, uh, we don't have any scheduled presentations at this time, so we'll move into our treasury report. Thank bank account balances as of September 30th, 2018. Citizen State Bank checking, $3,295,106.52. Citizens Money Market, $5,771.44. Citizens Money Market Fund, $46, $51.15. Citizens Money Market Suicide Prevention Fund, $17,446.12. American Plaza Management Referendum Proceeds, $194,355.69. For total bank account balances of three million five hundred twelve thousand seven hundred thirty dollars and ninety two cents. Okay. Move to accept. Second. We have a motion. David. Second. John, I believe. Uh, set the treasury report is presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is consideration of our consent agenda which consists of um, meeting minutes for our September 24th meeting, approval of the biomonthly bills for October 2018, approval of resignations and retirement of Connie Mueller as our eight-hour eight uh, elementary paramedia assistant, uh, approval of contracts and modifications uh, of Alicia Rutten, seven-and-a-half-hour middle school special ed para. Shane Coach is our middle school uh, boys basketball coach. Taylor Waller is our middle school girls basketball coach. And approval of student participation in the early uh, college credit program. And uh, approval of uh, any curricular uh, modification requests for part-time or virtual, which I see, don't see any this month. So. It's in your book, Howard. It's in your it's in your book underneath the exhibit. Can uh, F. Next page. Can F. Second. I have a motion, Kirk, second, David, to accept the consent agenda as presented. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, next is our student enrollment update.
All right, as you can see, exhibit 11A, all of the total of one, and again, end seats, 1599. Reduce lunch rate is 18.99%. Open enrollment in versus out is a net 94 in. Lastly, in our virtual uh, charter school, we have 103 students. Any questions with the current monthly enrollment? Yeah. Okay, if not, I'll move on to the next report. Um, John had mentioned that uh, previous meeting, you know, where, where are we at with, in respect to the January 2017 Applied Population Lab enrollment projections? What do they project and what are we with actual? So I uh, just uh, want to just display, this isn't in your uh, in any exhibit or handouts, um, just a couple pages from the 2000, January 2017 Applied Population Lab. So they presented a bunch of data, as you remember, um, they always go back and they look to say, you know, the autopsy from the previous three years. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're uh, looking at uh, where we're at from the past two years. But before we get to that, I want to remind you there are always three growth trends that they present. Um, this last one, they presented the baseline projection model, which they predicted enrollment will decrease over the next five years by 1.4%. Second projection model was a five-year trend where they predicted a 7.2% decrease over the next five years. And then the two-year trend of 5.2% decrease over the next five years. Um, remember uh, over a year ago, or last spring it was, we challenged um, some of the enrollment uh, figures and projections based on housing starts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, Jen planned accordingly for, for uh, enrollment growth, both virtually and uh, in, in seats. Um, and then as you saw last month, uh, it exceeded that even more. Uh, it even exceeded those growth projections. Um, so I um, just developed a spreadsheet that showed, and I, and I didn't go back 10 years, so on this one you can see back to 11-12. Just looking at the bottom line, 1,516 students. We had a little dip there, um, and we're back to 1,552 and 1617 at the time of the latest APL report. So, moving forward, the APL report projected, uh, again, uh, I used the baseline projection, which showed the smallest percent of decrease, right, which we thought was uh, most closely reflect our actual growth. Remember, if you remember back to the 2013, we picked a two-year slow mm -hmm. growth model for our referendum planning. They don't have a two-year slow growth, they call it the baseline um, here. So I used that one. So again, that showed the least amount of decrease. So even compared to that, you can see we exceeded that, and I need to change this number. This is actually 29, the third one. So you can see uh, they projected 1555, we're at 1584. And then that was last year, so we we're plus 29 over the projections. This current year, uh, we're at 1550 is what they predicted, we're at 1590 for a plus 40. And I also want to point out what do these numbers mean? Where did we get this data? Because Pam and Jen and I uh, spent better part of, well, half a day at least, uh, figuring this out because they don't match up with their third Friday official count. They don't match up with the three-year uh, rolling average on our, our uh, revenue limit worksheet. So we finally figured out, because I think Pan said, we never had on our third Friday count, we never broke out by grade levels until about two years ago. So how do we do that? Well, kind of, again, um, Nancy Drew here, <laughs> figured out, and we finally found between all of us the numbers that matched up. We chose the third, we chose the Friday, I'm sorry, we chose the September enrollment uh, chart that you see here. So we went with the, the September one um, in every year. That was the number that we apparently provided the APL. 
so that we were, we were like, we have to compare apples to apples. So we, we, we did that. Uh, this is the number of end seats in September. Because you can see, for instance, this says 1590 actual. Right on our own chart, it's 1630 for actual third Friday in September count. Again, there's all different numbers. When we talk enrollment, and I looked through the APL study again, and, and, and I mentioned this to John earlier, maybe three studies ago, they got into the actual methodology, but in this last two reports, there was no methodology. What does student enrollment mean? Um, and that's what we had to do with detective work to figure out. So for these numbers in this projection, students in seats, which makes sense, right? Because we're planning for facilities, for a referendum for facilities. You need space uh, for kids that are in seats. You don't need space for virtual students. So that's something for our next APL if we choose to go that route, um, which would be due in a little over a year, if we do every three years, we might want to consider. Are we looking at more than students just in seats? Um, we're looking at our virtual students, which the last report was not in existence. Um, the benefit to that, and we look, you know, to looking at both, is that we have to look at facilities, but we also have to look at budget. Because those students virtually, obviously, um, have expenditures and, and they have revenues. So any question with this? To summarize it, plus 29 last year, plus 40 this year, over their projections. So obviously we're not declining, at least the last two years. And um, you can see at our 4K number, we're plus 21 just in 4K. Okay. And even if you take that high and low variance, the plus 21 and the minus 16, we're still at plus five in, in that cluster. Just in the two, yeah. The other thing that I looked at on this, Tim, is uh, for example, if you look at the actual in 1819, um, for our uh, grade levels, um, if you go back, so our freshman class this year is that 125. I'm looking in the uh, second to last row where it yeah. starts at 117.99. So our high school right now um, is somewhere around 425 or so. Is that right? Uh, 446. 446. And if you go backwards and you take the 125, the 110, the 111, the 143, I think that pushes us up to, uh, what is that, uh, 235, 336, 436, somewhere around 490, 485, 490 in four years or three years. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to feel not only that's more sections, right? You're going to have more ninth grade English sections and math sections and things like that when we go to 143. They've been doing that every kind of year. Yeah, so that's that that really big bubble, but then even following behind it, you know, we still have those classes in the 119, 121, 112, 119. You know, we're not yeah. going to get really smaller for many years in the middle school, high school. Uh, we're still pushing that bubble up. So I think three years from now, the high school is going to feel full two ways. The number of courses we need to offer just to get students into the classes they need and then where are the teaching spaces but we may have to get to a model where if we're not putting more classrooms in you know our teachers each going to be able to have their own classroom and Vaughn says we're running at a 75 percent efficiency or 80 percent efficiency in the high school because teachers may not be in there at lunch or we're not putting a class in there every possible period right, because right. they have a lunch time, a prep time, et cetera. So we may need to say, hey, do we need to take two classrooms and make that office cubicles for our teaching staff so that we can use eight more classrooms or six more classrooms every single period and make it feel more like a college schedule. You just go to that room, but then you lose, you know, buckles. Um, yeah. All of that. All so, you know, well, but I think the wrong time to have that conversation is three years. So, so um, we got to be right. thinking about that now. They're already sharing some classroom space a little bit yeah. in the high school. Right? Yeah. Um, but only because they're not they're right. part time, not necessarily having to. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
So you have the bubble that's uh, directed yeah. for 490 in the high school. So. so you might have six math classrooms, but you might have eight teachers right. teaching in it. Right, so the college model. So, is this, I guess the question is, do we continue to run off this last study or is it time that we need to reconsider what we're seeing? For the sake of the three year, it would be a year from now before we Yeah. Right, but this one wasn't as comprehensive. Correct. Right. Yeah. They yeah. did it as an update and there was a very limited update. So what was the cost of the full gen? Do you remember? Is it about seventy five hundred? I don't recall. Okay. I have to I look want to say sixty five hundred. I think so. Yeah, we may just want to know what the price, and, and maybe applied laboratories isn't the right folks to use anymore. Right? There's another one now. We're learning about Friday. It does a great job too. I don't know. If you want to compare apples to apples? It might be worthwhile to see what the difference in cost would be. And, the and what they provide. Right. And I don't think it's something we have to rush into, but it's something which we're already running into issues of space and uh, future planning. It might be something we need to look into. We need to figure get a plan ahead of time. Exactly. And I, and I just did that at the high school peak this afternoon when I had some time to look at it. I mean, I have no sense of what's coming into elementary if you keep running these numbers through. My understanding but, is there are no open classrooms in the elementary anymore. They're all being utilized, um, so. It's pretty full. I think it is full because we put that one 4K class in there. Yeah, it's done in the fourth grade. So here's the... Uh, is that this kindergarten one that's just kind of like a just opposite? Like we've got a bubble at that one level and then we've got just kind of... But, it, but then the rest went, you know, and then you could see the other classes are back on. Well, if you look at over those years, it's just kind Trish, of strange. it seems like every other year it's like you get a one in the low 100s and then you get one in the 120s and then you get one in the low 100 and, and you can kind of see that. Two years ago we had that graduating class at 80 something. Yeah. But that was like the last of the, the, the last 80s. Of the 80s for sure. But this 96 in kindergarten this year yeah, is really good. an anomaly compared to over the last else. 10 yeah. years. Right. That's why I'm just like, it's just kind of strange. Like, it's just not the, a good birth year or something. Here, here's the um, proposal. So the district wide enrollment projection was 3,300. Past housing trends was 600. Special presentation if she came up the board, um, 150 per hour, including travel time. So that was the last study. It was approximately 49, 4,000. That was the that was baseline. The, yeah. I think there was a, a more in depth. Yeah, there's a more comprehensive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess if you can uh, look into the the two and see if we could get a quote on a full study. APL to the other one. Here's a Kaufman something. Okay, is there anything else we need to know about the student enrollment and my population If not, we'll move on to the student staff and community recognition. So. Turn it over to John. Um, we have three uh, recognitions um, for for several people, and you'll understand in a moment. The first one is to Michelle Johnson. A thank you, thank you for your continued involvement and dedication to our work 4K program. You take the time each week to provide music and books to all 4K students in our district. Just a reminder: Michelle Johnson is the uh, Hammond librarian. Uh, recognition to Logan Kimberly and the girls varsity golf team. Congratulations on your regional championship. It's nice to see your hard work, dedication, and constant improvement rewarded. And then uh, a recognition to several of our staff, Pam Katner, Kim Gunderson, 
Stephanie Polsta, Heather Wester, Jessica Stanton, Amy Bahada, Lori Press, and Jen Fleshold. And the recognition is great job with the third Friday student count this year. We know the process is very intricate and detailed, and we appreciate your diligence with such an important process. Thank you. Those are the recognitions from the board for this month. Okay. Thank you all for those recognitions. And, uh, thank you for those recognized. Okay. Uh, with that, then uh, we will move on to the next item, which is a discussion of our possible budget additions. So, if you have handouts, yes. I'll you. So. So before we get into the numbers, just ask the board to um, uh, consider some things, right? So kind of like guiding principles we often focus on. So um, with that in mind, uh, Jen has developed a spreadsheet that kind of have different areas of focus. Um, Staff-centered, more of a fund balance, OPEB-centered, or a hybrid of both. And um, also a little background. If we back up uh, in regards to staff, I thought you might ask, um, you know, how many staff have we added over the last two years? We've been fortunate enough to be able to do that, right? So in 2017-18, the beginning of that year, we were add, able to add 10.4 FTE in staff. And then this year already, we've been able to add 12.5. And again, with our high school, for instance, we added almost, we added one core teacher at the high school, except for social studies this year. And uh, you know, again, language arts, special ed, and we had first and a second grade teacher, half-time school psych, and our three 4K teachers. So that's just this year. Um, alrighty, so um, we've been fortunate enough to be able to add uh, 23 FTE the last few years. Facilities. Um, obviously, you know the history with referendums, the energy efficiency uh, referendum. And then um, I'm happy to announce we just received, uh, it'll, it'll be public um, Wednesday, but we received notification. We got 93,000 additional uh, Department of Justice dollars for school safety, uh, which bring almost all of it goes to uh, facilities, exterior doors, um, uh, infrastructure with technology. And that's, that 93 is in addition to the 32 we already received. So about 120,000 uh, this year uh, as well as went to facilities. And then in addition to that, uh, about 40000 was left from referendum dollars and the mall family donation yet. So 10000 was able to go uh, to the auditorium, Randy Pfeiffer had specific requests. And then um, about 30 some thousand uh, was able to go in facilities and technology. So with that in mind, just a little background, I guess, and where we're at. Because I know we have to consider all these things. But... Um, I wanted to, to bring it to your attention regarding facilities um, and staff, and then fund balance, um, as you're, you're, you're well aware of as well. Um, we'll have a deficit if we don't add to that. Tim, do you have a breakdown somewhere of what that 23 staff is? And, uh, and yeah. We don't need it right now, I, I, but I'd just like to say, because some people have said, how many teachers have you added, which is... Go through kinda, real quick. Yeah. Yep, so 17, 18, a third grade teacher, a fifth grade teacher, a sixth grade teacher, and an elementary counselor, a half-time high school counselor, middle school AD dean of students, half-time gift and talented coach, um, a bookkeeper slash virtual secretary slash district office, um, an OT assistant, but that was just point two, elementary sped paraprofessional, auditorium manager, uh, added uh, a couple months to the uh, make the activity secretary for high school 12 months and then an elementary special education teacher and then this year um, halftime school site first grade teacher second grade teacher high school math teacher high school ela teacher high school sped teacher high school science teacher high school slash middle school spanish teacher three 4K teachers, and uh, a middle school math interventionist, and a sixth grade teacher. That's like eight teachers. Four, three, That's like teachers. 12, 13, 
I've, I counted 15, I think, over, over two years. Or um, if you have this one, it's like 15 or 16. I ran out of toes. So. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So with that said, I yeah, um, turn over to Jen to explain the um, spreadsheet. So last time you met Tim, went through this enrollment summary with you. I wanted to include that just more for reference. We won't go through it again. But at the bottom, note the net additional revenue that we had talked about between our open enrollment and our increase in resident student count, as well as the increase in open enrollment out that would come off of that. So if you flip over to the next page, you'll notice the very top line is that same net additional revenue. There's been a couple changes since, since that happened, and one of them was that our health insurance premiums for 2019 are coming in less than we anticipated. So our cap is at 9%, and it came in at 6.38%. Yeah, we, we're not sure how that happened. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we're not going to question it. We're, gonna we're take not going to question it. We're going to take it and run. So, no, and we're not going to ask for a little recount. <laughs> <laughs> so over the course of a year, that's approximately $50,000 freed up. Of course, we're only talking about from January through August teachers' contracts and a lot of the staff contracts go through August, so about two thirds of that amount. So we added approximately 33,000 back into the budget for that freed up um, cost from not having to spend it on health insurance. The top portion on the budget options worksheet are those things that we must have this year. So right now we have a pair at the middle school, a health aid at the high school, and housekeeping at the middle school. Those people have been working the additional hours since the beginning of the school year. Um, middle school needed the pair for study halls, otherwise they have no coverage. Um, the health aid has a student that needs additional coverage beyond what she was previously working. And then the housekeeping was due to adding Trinity Lutheran over here as an extra cleaning site. So we needed, we took another person out of the middle school, sent them over to Trinity to clean. So we needed a little more time over there. When we talked last spring, we had talked about adding vision insurance for 12 month staff and nine month staff to equalize the benefits as a part of the progression to equalize benefits for all staff. Um, the consensus at that time was that if we could get it in the budget for July to put it in there, we were not able to, and actually in the end, we had to make a few cuts right at the end to get everything to work out. So we are adding that in now. And then one last thing was middle school math interventionists. They needed a supply budget. It was a new position this year, and it was overlooked um, that they needed some money in there for supplies. So those are our must-have items for this year, things that are already happening. So that, is, that, is that 222 is sustainable based on the student enrollment? Correct. So... But depending on, you know, as salaries and expenses increase from year to year, you'll notice as in a little bit, we'll go through the yeah. budget model and how that plays out. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it takes more each year to do what we're doing this exactly. year. Exactly. So, so that leaves us about 230000 that we're working with once all those things are in place. So as Tim mentioned, we, we went with three different scenarios and would, are proposing them as the three scenarios. So the first one is more staff-centered. We've listed additional positions that are needed um, based on order of importance. We've prorated them for the cost that it would cost us from November 1st on. 
to have them employed this year. Um, the only exception to that would be the virtual ed teacher school counselor. That person has been working since approximately the beginning of August, I believe, at 10 hours a week because we had to have someone in the position helping out um, Stephanie with those duties. So if that's prorated, that's not sustainable in the next budget. Right, so some of the, these positions are not a full year cost, so next year we would have to add that in as an additional item to make those a full one FTE for the entire year. With that scenario, you can see that we would put about $35,000 in our fund balance at the end of the year which would decrease our fund balance to right around 16 and a half percent. And our policy is what? Maintain 17 to 19 percent. If it drops to 15 percent, then we need to have a plan to get it back up to the 17 to 19 percent. So that's our option one or our staff centered option. Option two is our fund balance OPEB centered option, and that's much more conservative. And again, we'll look at the, at the finer details in a few minutes, but what's gonna happen next year, because we have prepaid local retirement benefit in the past, we've been reaping the benefits of that the last two years. This year we did have to add about 65,000 back into our budget to cover costs that were coming back up. Next year we'll have 217,000. So if we don't prepay a portion of that, we're going to need an additional 150,000 in the budget next year just to cover that increased cost in the local retirement benefit. So with this proposal, we would pay about $105,000 this year. So it would free up money next year. And then we would put the remaining amount in our fund balance to keep it at 17%. That's about 125,000. The so third, just Jen, just okay. take that yep. math all the way through for me. So on the uh, on prepaying local retirement, right now this year we we've got to pay sixty four thousand remaining on what we have obligations for for this year. Yeah. Next year our total obligation is two seventeen. Right. And we take off this. You're saying if we carry the same budget of sixty four thousand, that's where we need. The additional 150. Correct. So if we pay 105, that takes us down to 112. Right. Of which we already have, have 64, 65. so we have to come up with another 50. 60, well, whatever, 50. Yeah, 50. A little less than 50. But that's still an ad next year. That would be an ad next year. Okay. Yes. In approximately how many years? we have to pay on OPEP before it gets to zero? Well, every time a staff member retires, then it increases. So if you remember in our yeah, wage we and saw benefit like five, committee. We still have like five years to go of potential retirees, don't we? Oh, we have way more than that because we added those different benefit levels down to staff that are 40, was it 40 years old? 47. Yeah, it was I thought, I didn't think it down. was all the way to 40, was it? I think we, oh, yeah. we went down to that 47 originally, but then I think we added another <clears throat> tier. So the cost isn't as much because the payout was smaller, but, we're, we're but going, it extends yeah, it out. Okay. Yeah. 2040 refinance. Yeah. It was, it was a long timeline. On the next page, I did summarize just from those staff members that have retired what's coming up over the next few years. But of course, I mean, I guess I could have added one more on here for one that we know is coming up in December. 
but um, this is through the end of the 2017-18 years staff that have already retired. So if I understand this right, we've got roughly three, four teachers and a staff member that would be dropping off uh, 2020 to 2021, and mm -hmm. then we would have another five, five dropping off the year after that. Yeah. And another five the year after that. Okay. But that doesn't include any of the ones that would be added that they decide to right. go. Okay. Okay. Right, but the good news is, is even if five retire, their cost per year is less. Is less. maximum amount at this point is 9000 a year instead of 14509 okay. So okay. that 105 that John meant, that's on top of the 64 or that includes the 64 So we already paid out 64000 in August for this year's local retirement benefit with this scenario, we would take another 105000 and we would pay it off on these people here that are already retired so that it takes money out of next year's budget. So we'd start at the top with Teacher 1, and we would pay as much as we can going down so that we don't have to pay that out next year. So the bottom line, Trish? is we take this 217,528 next year. We're gonna pay 105 of that this year. Yep, I get that. I just wasn't sure it has that 64 and it says current budget. So I'm like, that's on top of it. That's the only part. Yeah, we paid, so we had 64,000 remaining in our obligation for this year. So that's what we've already paid in August. Yeah. And then with this additional revenue, this scenario says pay 105,000 towards the 217 for next year. Yep. Okay. okay, so our third option was our hybrid model, and that included adding our top three needs positions the virtual ed teacher, school counselor, the sixth grade para and the sped secretary and again all those numbers are prorated so they're a partial year with that we would still be able to put about 114,000 into our fund balance so that percentage would drop just slightly it would be just under 17 percent So if you flip back, we, I put it in the Baird budget model. So that you could compare from year to year. So you can see with the staff-centered budget model. Now this assumes, so through 2019 is accurate, of course, because that's what we have budgeted. But starting in 2020, it actually assumes flat enrollment with zero per student increase. So, so that's how you get the large negative balances going forward. Yeah, if you pay your staff, their salaries would go up. It includes like a 2% salary increase and So you can see with the, the second model, the fund balance, OPEB-centered model, in 2020, that amount is, negative amount is less because if we put the 105,000 toward OPEB, then it wouldn't hit that following year. So it helps our fund balance percent as you go out.
What's a three-year rolling average? Staffing needs as well as fiscal responsibility of taxpayers. Um, again, I can just hit, hit, hit each staff. We didn't really get um, into the details of the staff. School counselor, I think, self explanatory. Um, we've talked about uh, being a priority to, to staff our um, virtual school as it expands. Special Education Secretary, currently Kim Gunderson, is split between the Director of Teaching Learning and Special Education uh, Student Service Director, Pat Bashy. So um, I think just about every district has a full-time Special Ed Secretary. Um, Kim, uh, her strength is in data. She's a scientist by trade. I think she'd be outstanding with the Director of Teaching and Learning. And free up uh, Special Education Secretary. That's, that's a 10-month. Uh, or 1900 hour job is what we feel um, and talking to everybody and getting their input would be necessary to sustain that. Um, the admin also has kind of screened all of these with the uh, most impact on kids, right? So, but we talked about that being number two because freeing up Pat and Nick's time and Kim's time would have uh, a great positive impact on our vision, our mission, our three HAG our uh, district priorities, all that, just aligns. Sixth grade sped para, that's that's kind of one of those typical things we see almost every year. We add some sort of paraprofessional, professional education based on student needs, which we can't always predict. That's the big question. Yep. Um, computer technician again, Chad and Dan, um, the technology in this district has increased 400%. <laughs> Uh, over the last three years, get our, our staffing uh, hasn't necessarily grown proportionately. Adding Dan, Dan now is supposed to be a technology integration specialist, but is spending uh, more than 50% of his time on being a Chromebook manager, basically, the better description of his time. Again, not utilizing his time and talents. Um, grounds crew lead, um, we're short staffed. We have currently have two people working there, one four hours, one six and a half, one and a half of which is mail run. So between them, we have an eight hour day position. Um, to make it work in the summer, uh, we're able to hire some additional folks for mowing. But once school starts, um, it might be obvious to all of us that we aren't keeping up. Um, so those are the staffing and kind of the rationale behind those. So the virtual ed, they're part-time a teacher, part-time a counselor? No, that, it's really a, it's all a uh, counselor. Yeah, probably so there, teacher there hasn't been a virtual ed Correct. counselor position, and there's a need for that. Correct. Like Glenn had it, it, uh, recommended that we at least start with 10 hours a week just to get through the beginning of school with the high so enrollment. registration. And yeah. We're finding out she can do so much more. Um, from uh, academic career planning as a void we have, um, that she could be doing, uh, and just and then just counseling stuff. Um, nine out of ten uh, applications um, are regarded are regarding mental health in our virtual school. I need to. Do we have a part time or a half time counselor in any of the buildings right now? Nope, we're now we two full time in every building. And still not at the recommended ratio. They did that report last spring, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So a couple of things that I would look at right away, um, a hybrid of the hybrid, where you would start everybody in January, so it'd be prorated back to, uh, you'd start that semester instead of prorating it to now, so there'd be some savings that you could put toward uh, a different priority. You know, okay. for instance, the uh, local retirement benefit you could you could nudge toward 
fixing that number. Um, I'm not sure if, you know, there, there's other discussion points to have here, but you know, I don't know if starting people in the middle of a semester is as advantageous or immediate as jumping on it now instead of starting it at the natural transition. In the hybrid, I mean, I, I certainly see grounds crew lead being um, necessary, but we've made it through the toughest time. Uh, now the snow is going to fly and the grass has stopped growing. Uh, our current staff can probably keep up with snow removal. Come spring again, the grass starts growing, you know, we'll have to revisit that. Again, the computer technician, we can get by, right? I mean, um, we have, but it's something. You mentioned the mail one. What's the mail one? Inter-office mail and to the post office, so between all the buildings, uh, from not just inter-office mail, but the cash, the money, going to the bank. Kitchens. Like oh, kitchens. yeah, kitchen food, food mm -hmm. between the freezers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Do we need, I don't know what these guys make, but do we need their level of pay, or could we hire somebody else that's a, to do that, get more time? Expand the bus know? driver. Or for that, okay. Yeah, or subcontract to a service? The bus drivers make I'm more just than thinking somebody that any of the grounds crew for hour. Probably. Yeah, they, they're 25 or something like that. Right? Because I, mean, I'd be I'd, I'd, I don't know. I'd really like to discuss that further, but not in all the session. Yeah, yeah. So no, I understand. I, 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 I think Greg knows this, my philosophy on our, on our grounds, mm -hmm. um, the importance of yeah, taking care of our grounds. I say we can take care of our grounds. What does that say about taking care of our kids? You know, it starts with the basics, and um, you know, we are under some pressure. Right, curb appeal. Well, and being stewards of our resources. Correct. If we don't prepay toward that retirement benefit, then looking at next year's budget, we have to figure out how to pull that out. And our fund balance then we'll contribution has to be level also. I mean, we, we can't. If we pay 35 this year and spend the rest of it on recurring, we don't have anything to pay next year on it or to put into the fund balance next yeah, year. We, so we help. Yeah. Sorry, help we're me. also the most conservative of us. Well, there's one more conservative saying we would lose to it. But we don't know, because we're in the budget year, we don't know what's gonna happen for allocation. But even if you take your 1579, and you get $100 per student, there's 157,000. You know, if we go up by another 15 students or 20 students, you, you get a portion of that, of course, you know, you're, for every 30, you get 10, right? Yep. With the three year rolling average. So, um, I mean, right now we're looking at a very conservative number into next year because we don't know what the allocation is going to be for student, if any. Although we have two education governors that want to be governors, so I don't know how it can be less than about $800 per student. Um, <laughs> but I mean, there, I don't think that the 283. Although that's the, the realistic number today, I don't think that's going to be the true number on the bear What I, I guess I didn't think to ask Jen until now, you know, this OPEB, and we've, we've always we've prepaid the last two years. But before that... We paid it as we went. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But but does it kind of hurt us? Because now that we, that budgeted number is 64 this year, or in the past it might have been... 150 to 100. I think yeah. is that our highest number is 217, probably our bubble. Coming up, no, in the past no, it's we been as high as 400 and some. But that's yeah. our highest foreseeable future number. Yeah. At this point, yes. I mean, because when the when the when five go off or four, yeah, five go off next year, we would need seven or eight retirees to 
replace to that. push that number back to the 217. Right, because it's a smaller mm -hmm. amount. And I was going to ask you about this. So obviously, then expenditures, but then you, you, you it doesn't really affect the budget till the year after you ex, you spend it, right? So, I'm not, yeah, <laughs> I'm not explaining that question right. So I guess yeah, what's the impact? Because we've always just paid as we went. But then last two years, like, hey, we, we want to help next year's budget. We have this and we prepay it. That helps until we get back to not prepaying it where exactly. we're at now, right? So it kind of... Because then we used that money to fund those positions you were talking right. about earlier. So it's kind of paying it forward. Eh? I thought as we paid up, as we saved money on the local retirement, we were going to add that to the... 403. Well, we had said we would keep the 403B stable for the first five years at the one and a half percent. So this is now year three. So we still have two more years at one and a half percent. And then, and then it goes two. up a little bit. Yeah. Or 1.75 or whatever the increments were. But yeah. Yeah. It was like every five years we were moving. And, and what's our bus purchase schedule? There is no bus included in the budget this year. Right. What's our need? We don't need one this year. We've been taking it year by year with Brian. And the is bus it two garage years now that we haven't done a bus? Or did we do one We got one year? last year. The last special year. ed one. That was two years ago. Okay. But we've also increased the life expectancy of the buses by So as always, piece of, we got a pie, but right. the, the hard part decisions are. We need to make a decision today. Um, well, Jen, you need to have a, Jen needs to be able to go back and work on a budget to present for your approval in two weeks, on the 29th. Right. So we would need a direction. I, I'm concerned about our fund balance eroding. Yeah. I like Scott's plan, but I'd add 10 grand in so that we'd stay at 17. And it didn't get there just because the way the numbers work. The right. staff yeah. really said if you were able to. If we prorated it to January and, and put the difference into the, into the fund balance, that would help. But the yeah. retirement benefit is going to be the elephant in the room next, if we're, you know, if, we, if we're not careful. That is next. Yeah. And I'm, I'm almost... I mean, I'm always about adding appropriate staff, but I think if we, my feeling right now is if we can get through this year in good shape with, without adding all of these, even if we add part of it, and take care of the, the glaring big pictures that we start next year hiring the need, we can reevaluate the need and hire appropriately. Yeah, I don't know, year. but I'm I'm nervous about having to find money next year to keep the staff that we hired this year. Agreed. The we've not really budgeted to prepay retirement. Right. We when we get to the end of the year, we have money left over. We do that. So our you know our year's just starting. Mm -hmm. So not budgeting the prepayment now and you that kind of agreeing that to the extent we have money at the end of the year That's like to pay agree. that forward but that we were able year. we were able to prepay in 1516 and 1617 at the end of the year but not in 1718 because the budget was too tight but that's the year that we went we really pushed We're very the budget on, on the hiring though last year too. And we pushed the budget on the hiring this year too. We had <laughs> more this year, so maybe we. Okay. I mean, depending on what we do here, but. We can we can make the staffing decisions. You know, trip pair that down. Um, uh, if you give us you know the direction of, I'm hearing get to 17 in the fund balance, and then is there a number? want to prepay or for the local retirement benefit. 
I would approach it from a, from the other way. Okay, so here's your three proposed staff. What's prior? If we had to prioritize two of them, or once once a lower budget number, you know, maybe we do only this one and this one, and we don't prepay the local retirement until at the end of the budget. If we still got that money, we can do it. But maybe we do put the whatever ten thousand dollars in and say it's not the special ed secretary this year, or it's not the whichever one. It, is the least high priority. Mm -hmm. And is there an option on a, so if, if, if um, Kim is doing both curriculum and SPAD, right? Do you need a full time for SPAD? Do you also, what you're and also you need talking about curriculum? Do you need a full time for a curriculum? What would happen if you do if you add a half? Now the challenge here is if you need a full time for SPAD, you know, when uh, Kim is our full time right now. And you're saying she's better suited for curriculum. I guess a, another question comes to mind for me, do we have any less than full time FTEs that we can that should be full-time or could be full-time or could be utilized appropriately as full-time and would like to be you know um, I don't know who that person might be but um, I think Kelly subbed for art or something the other day and Carrie's not full-time and I don't know if she wants to be or not but if she could be a morning sub or a, or something to take some pressure off something else maybe taking care of the people that we already have and have in our benefit plans and everything else is something that should be looked at too. I think that is the only person. There's one other, you know, the high school math teacher, but she doesn't want to be full. I think that is, and we've actually not had her go full time with subbing, right? Mm -hmm. Covering because of her sub shortage. Well, and if she was full time and she did the two hour morning sub coverage until on some of those days where that's all you need or on a day where it's a stop gap or something. And maybe I don't mean to talk specifically about a person, but it just came up yeah. to, to me the other day. And if, that, if we have somebody that wants to be full time and we could utilize them, well, I guess a question that I would have is uh, with the sped para: is any of that money, or how much of that money, would be recoverable uh, through special ed aid? So it's about 26-27%. It varies each year, but it's not reimbursed until the following year. So we spend the money this year. Next year, our aid allocation increases. 25 cents. 25 cents for every dollar. And is the SPED secretary reimbursable too? No. And the paraprofessional is like the highest need. I mean, we have students that have a need. Yeah, I would drop that one. Okay. Okay, we have the options and uh, we've thrown some stuff out. What are we looking at? I guess. Well, what I'm hearing talked about is begin on the beginning of the second semester, whenever that is, Jan January 20th, 20th or whatever, or whatever. right? Well, January January 6th, just isn't it? Semester? No, oh, so semester, so right, right. Yeah. But we'd be doing our interviewing now and we'd hire for yet yeah, start mm -hmm. third week of January. So you, you pick up a little value there. Um, for sure, the sixth grade SPAD. Um, and for sure, the virtual ed school counselor. That's the two biggest needs, is what I was hearing you say. Is that true? Yeah, and that. Another complicating factor is um, that person is also um, filling in here as receptionist in addition to the counseling right now. So, it's been very helpful. Okay. Might actually would have better with someone here. Not full time in the virtual school until January. 
appreciate it. Especially and then the special ed secretary, I didn't hear a lot of consensus around that one right now. I don't want to. Well, it's it's more like what you had mentioned that there's probably a need for a special ed secretary, but maybe that would be a half for the other. Or, you know what I mean? Like, is there a need for both of those? So Kim is doing half, half, half curriculum, half, one half. and a half instead of another. Can we add a half yeah. instead of adding 1,900? All your office staff, all work full-time. Yeah, I mean, there's a need for both full-time, um, but can we? Yeah, it's better than what we have. But, um, I don't know whether it's a person that works half-time, it works in their schedule, or we try to add something because somebody else is not full-time. And then I heard seven to get the fund balance to 17 percent. Yeah, when um, I don't know the accountant person, he he had mentioned that we, where we had kept ours at 17 percent, that a lot of a lot of other schools keep it higher. And he was, I don't know, so that concerns me. I guess Look, that at 17 percent is a good number for for borrowing. Kim and I were talking a little bit about that. I mean that. That saves, had, that saves us all kinds of money. Baird had no issues with us at 17, and the rating agency had no issue with us at 17. So, so if we keep and, 17. And, you know, the remember, auditors are paid to be conservative. And so this 25. If he says 17 is okay. Well, he said all the other districts are doing 25 and 26 percent. I thought like, he said 19. Well, then we're not spending money on kids. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, well, and they get more than us, right? Remember, they're right. 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 allows us to not have to short-term borrow. Um, or very minimally. Yeah, for yeah. Days. a week. I think so I think that's year. one of our yeah. most important financially prudent obligations is to keep that at 17 as a minimum. If we let it slip, then you really are stuck trying to get it back there. Yeah, and when you go to referendum, you cost yourself a fortune. I guess the question that I'll throw out here is the sixth grade sped era. Is that a special need that is absolute now or can that wait to January? I guess it, yeah, and I'm I assuming would, we've got some. I wouldn't make a blanket that it has to be January if, if that, you know, a parent can walk in and make an impact today today not that another person can't but yeah. the but the continuity thing of starting at a semester seems more and that one's even that one's right. Right. Teacher, so right. it's a couple thousand bucks to delay it just do it now that's the lowest you have what you need or you need a motion or what do you need? Nope, i think I'm, I'm i'm hearing yes and the yeah yes to the virtual school counselor yes to the para question mark do some more digging but um, special ed secretary is uh, the lowest priority um, uh, and then yes uh, on the fund balance and uh, get it to 17 percent and then keep every, and then keep every priority on pre-funding yeah because you wouldn't budget necessarily for a pre-fund pre-funding right. you, you it's always uh, if you have if, we have, if you it's have a good way to spend money that rather than you don't spend you have at the end of the year but you don't go into a budget year typically budgeting okay i can allocate it in the budget but we don't have to right right okay. i think at the end of the year you come and tell us here's what we've got left hopefully if anything and then we get to here's, but if, here's the things you can spend it on i think what jen is saying is we can put a hanger out there for a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars that kind of keeps everything else in a, in a different, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would put the $100,000 marker out there and if we have 50 of it, we have 50 of it. And if we have a 140, then we figure out, do we want to do the 100 and spend 40 on something else? Then we would have to spend it seven times. We can only spend each dollar once a day. <laughs> but if it's in your approved budget, you take a little flexibility away from yourself at the end of the... She's just doing an allocation. She's not doing the absolute, right? We would still, we could still wait until the end of the year That's to decide if we wanted to pay it or not. And when in June, when we do those budget transfers, mm -hmm. we can move the money right. to another. But area. if you put a hundred thousand in now, 
and we decide we only want to do 40. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. That's. So I guess it doesn't really matter. It's a it's a number on paper. If we have any left, we decide what to do with it. Yeah, okay. It, I made the comment. It's just as much work and just as much consternation over what to add as to what to cut. You know, it's the exact same amount of work. It's better tough work, decisions, though. but the bottom line is you can smile when you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we've got direction then. Okay, with that, we'll move on to other business. A uh, reminder of our special board meeting on the 29th here at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we will hopefully we can keep that to be a real short meeting. We'll deal with budget and mill rates. Uh, mill rates. And uh, Trish, what's your 29th one? Okay. It's Monday. What's your 29th? Did we do communication oh, oh, at 5.30? Mm -hmm. Do what at 5.30? Oh, that's that. Communication meeting in front oh. of the special meeting. Yeah, that's this. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. When you say communication meeting, I'm not Remember, we had that ad hoc. Yeah, isn't that just a three? That's not a two message. Yeah. 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 Well, so I... Uh, Oh, he needs to provide. Yeah, it is okay. actually wide open right now. Can we uh, schedule Pam for the 29th at 530? 530. Yeah. We'll communicate about what, what we want to bring okay. and prepare for and set it. Okay. Okay, we're set there then. Uh, next is first call for the uh, state convention in January. Uh, January 23rd to Fifth. I will not be able to attend. This I'm year. supposed to be there, but I can't be there. Okay. I'm going to be in my own. Okay. I think the Howard is our delegate. Now, at this point, I'll, I will plan on being there. I'll sure. be there. Okay. I nominated so, Howard to be the delegate. So, Pam, you've already reserved <laughs> four rooms? <laughs> I just said that. Move to unanimous. Move unanimous. Aye. Aye. Thanks, Howard. <laughs> No so choice. Oh, exactly only one, get right? Right? I see that light coming right <laughs> out of the tunnel. Just want to make okay. sure before Pam cancels any rooms, then that nobody else even has it. I mean, if it's a definite no, then she can cancel them and give yeah, them back for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I would go otherwise. Once I let them go, they're gone. Hold tight for me, just so you go on. Okay. Just for I'll just hold out. I can't take time hold over. Okay, so if there's any interest at all, let Pam know. Next item is the upcoming uh, dates. We've got the meeting scheduled for October 29th here uh, for the uh, budget tax levy and mill rate, uh, 6.30 here in this building. November 5th is our next uh, special board learning and special meeting at 6.30 here in the district office. November 19th is our next regularly scheduled uh, board meeting. And then we have the uh, January uh, 23 through 25 for the state convention. Some will be here the 19th. Okay. On the day. Now I know it's falling in uh, toward deer hunting. So I will not think I will be here, but I'm not sure. Thanksgiving week. I will be there then. I cannot know. Um, I will not be at either one of the February meetings. Okay. I'm finally getting the knee replacement done. What does that have to do with it? We could have it at the hospital. You can have it at my house, <laughs> but we can't have it here. Uh, so November 19th, who, who for who is if Just I'm out of the <laughs> I'm iffy. How are here? I might say, David, or maybe. So we, uh, we just need to make sure we <laughs> have a quorum. I'll be here. 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 I think I will probably be here, but I'm not sure. So. One, two, Scott, three. Yeah, I, should, I should be like, here. Yeah, I, I can't see what it would, would be either. One, well, four. Okay. Pam, I won't be able to do it. Hopefully I won't have a lease. WASB. Shows up two hours later. I'm gone. Oh, you're gone. Yeah. Okay. That's How much? WASB. Okay. Is there any other dates that we need to put on the calendar at this point? You got the 29th. 
Second. 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 Second.